Hi everyone, this is Julie Bean, and today we're gonna to be making the Beadaholic stretch bracelet kits, and they come in a couple of different colorways. So I'm gonna show you what the kit is first, that the samples of the different colorways, and then I'm gonna show you exactly what you get in the kit, and then we're gonna make it together. So these are stretch bracelet sets. So for the kit, when you get the supplies, you can make a whole bunch of different bracelets, and you can pick the patterns you want. You see that I've got a couple different styles going here using the different beads. And so this is the gold and the turquoise one. So you see there's lots of different variation here. And depending upon your wrist size, you'll be able to make between seven and nine bracelets. So for the samples I did up, they were for a seven and a half inch wrist, which is kind of considered a medium sized wrist. So if you have a particularly small wrist, you'll probably be able to make nine bracelets. If you have a little bit of a larger wrist, you'll be able to make seven. And then if you're kind of in that middle ground, you'll probably be able to make eight. But here are the different colorways. We're gonna look at them first, and then I'll show you how to make it. So that was the turquoise and gold. Here is the purple and silver. And you see there's lots of different shapes of beads that you're going to get. And now the kits do vary a little bit in terms of the shapes of beads included. And you'll see that on the sample photos. And when you go to the website, you'll see it in the listing of the supplies, but you're gonna get seed beads. You're gonna get beautiful check glass beads. Um, every kit has some of these great, uh, let me show you here these beautiful round check glass beads, as well as some beautiful rondelles. And then you're gonna get seed beads and a mix. We're gonna go over all of that here in a minute. But there's the purple and silver. Here one is more of like an evening one or a neutral. This is silver and crystal with just a little hint of blue. So you can see what that looks like. And when we just start to pull these apart, you see there's a whole, whoops, a whole bunch of different styles that you can make with these. This one's really pretty. So you can wear these separately. This would be a great bracelet that you could just wear standalone, or you can cluster them together in, in groups of two or three or wear the whole stack together. And then here's another colorway. This is a pretty pink and silver one. So that's a nice one right there as well for those people who love rose tones and pink. But again, lots of different options with the beads. Okay, so those are the colorways. Now let's talk about what you actually get when you order one of these kits. So first off, you're gonna get the beads and you're gonna get four different types of beads to play with. First off, you're gonna get a tube of seed beads. These are size 8 -0. Now the color of the seed beads you get is gonna be based upon the colorway you get. So this is a really kind of pretty peachy kit, uh, peachy color kit right here. So we're gonna get these nice cream colored seed beads. Then you're gonna get a mix. And the mix is really cool because the mix gives you a lot of variety of beads all in one tube. So that's what gives you that really kind of unique eclectic look where you've got a whole bunch of different bead styles coming together. So you're gonna get a tube of a mix of seed beads. Then you're gonna get a pretty strand of these lovely fire polish round beads. And again, the color that you get is based upon the colorway that you choose to buy for the kit. And then these are gorgeous, very sparkly rondelles. And so you're gonna get those as well, which is a unique shape. It's fun to contrast the round with the rondelle, with the seed beads, with the mix. Okay, so those are the main beads. Now to string your kits, you're going to get a spool of opalon. And now this is a stretch fiber. Now what's nice about this is you're getting a lot of this and there's going to be even leftover to make additional bracelets with the other beads that you might have. And this is why I say that you're going to be able to make seven to nine bracelets based upon your wrist size. So if you use up all the beads, um, you'll definitely have enough stretch fiber left for other projects with your own beads or other beads that you order. So you're going to get the spool of the stretch cord. Then you're gonna get some glue. So the glue is to put on your knots. So stretch bracelets are great. They're usually fine without any glue on the knots. And most people don't actually put glue, but I like to include it in a kit just so you can put a little dab of glue on those knots to give them a little extra security. Then you're going to get a couple of these needles and you're only gonna probably use one and they're very fine, but two are included just in case you lose one or the eye becomes too compressed. And you'll see what I mean by that as we start to make our actual bracelets here. But these are great because it's got an eye that is big enough 
to string the stretch fiber through, and then it'll go through all your beads. It's gonna make stringing your bracelets a whole lot easier. So that is what you get when you order one of these kits. Okay, let's talk about tools that you'll need. Okay, you're gonna need a pair of scissors. I have just my regular jewelry scissors here. You can use just a standard scissor too. It's just to cut your opalon and to go ahead and cut your strands. So that's what you'll need scissors for. You will need something to apply your glue. So I have, let me grab it right here. I have a just scrap piece of paper and a scrap piece of wire. If you have a toothpick, that would work as well. You just need something that's disposable to apply your glue to your knots. Then it's recommended but not needed. It is helpful if you have something to stop your beads from coming off of your stretch cord as you're stringing it. So I like to use a bead stopper. I use it for my stringing projects. If you don't have that, you can use something like painter's tape or masking tape. And I'll show you both examples when we start to make our bracelets. Um, so if you don't have this, it's okay. If you're gonna make a ton of stretch bracelets, this is really handy to have. Um, even after you do this kit, it's a great little tool. But like I said, you can definitely use tape as well. And then the only other thing is you're gonna see me using my chain nose pliers just to open and close my tubes. It's just a little trick I like to do, um, but you can open them with your fingers too. So that's it. So the only tool, the tool that you absolutely need to have is a pair of scissors and then some stuff you can find around the house, which would be like a scrap piece of wire, toothpick, and a scrap piece of paper to apply your glue. All right, guys, we're ready to start to make our bracelets. All right, I'm gonna clear off this table a little bit. So we're gonna clear these guys off to the side just so it's not quite as distracting. I can maybe just keep them on the edge here so you can still see the color variations. All right, we're not gonna need our scrap piece of wire until later, so that's good. We'll just take that and put it aside. So let's go ahead and we are going to cut our strands now. Okay, to cut your strands, you see that they just have this little cord going through them. I'm gonna put my needles up. You can just snip it. So I just go in there and I snip. And I'm just gonna make some nice piles of beads. And that's gonna be basically what we have to play with. Um, Cause it really is like playing. Stretch bracelets are fun because you can make so many different patterns with the beads and there's no right or wrong way to do it. So there's, we've got our pretty round check glass. I'm gonna take the glue away because we don't need the glue right now. And then here's our tubes of beads. I'm gonna open them up and spill them all out as well. Okay, so you see you get a good amount of beads in a tube. And I'm gonna do the same with this tube. All right, and then as you, I spill this out, you can see some of the pretty shapes that we've got. We've got like a cube here. We have different sizes of seed beads, different colors of seed beads as well. So those are your initial beads all spilled, spilled out. And then you're just going to cut lengths, lengths of your stretch cord. So for your stretch cord, um, you just pull this off. It's like a little safety guard. You find the corner and it comes out and you are gonna cut yourself between seven to nine lengths of this. You could just start with one um, and go from there. That might be easiest as you determine how big you want each um, bracelet to be. Uh, so what you'll want to do is if you have a seven and a half inch bracelet, I would cut a good 18 to 20 inches of the stretch cord. And the reason for that is we're gonna be putting our needle on it and we're going to need to have lots of room to tie our knots put our needle back on and thread back through some beads. And you'll see here as we finish our first bracelet what I mean by all of that. But you don't wanna cut yourself too short of a length. So I would say go ahead and start with a good, I'm gonna cut myself about 18 inches here. I'm, I'm eyeballing it. Doesn't have to be perfect. It'll definitely be enough for your bracelet, but I've got the 18 inches here to start. And now we're ready to actually begin making our bracelet. So I mentioned that I wanted to show you the bead stopper as well as the uh, tape method. So when you are stringing, you can absolutely just string beads on here. Be really careful, watch them kind of come down towards the end and keep the 
string on your mat and make sure that the beads don't fall off. You can do that. What you can also do is use something like the bead stopper. And what you do is you just go about six inches from the end, do the spring action and put it in there. So that will stop your beads from falling off. If you don't have one of those, you can use masking tape or painter's tape. So you just rip off the end and you would just put it where you would put that bead stopper. So the only hesitation is sometimes tape can make your string fiber a little sticky. So that's the only drawback to doing tape. Um, but if you don't keep it on there too long and you don't slide it back and forth, it usually comes off pretty clean. And painter's tape is nice too because it's meant to not leave like a sticky residue. So those are the two things you can definitely do. So once you've gone ahead and you've cut your fiber, you're gonna pre-stretch it out a little bit. So that's easy to do. You just kind of pull on it, run your fingers across it, and give it a tug. So this is just pre-stretching out your stretch cord. It's still got a lot of elasticity to it. It's still very stretchy. It just gets any extra stretch out of there so that when you make your bracelet, it stays how you want it to stay. So I'm just running my fingers across it. And I'm not, I'm not like really pulling it super hard. It, it's just like a gentle, gentle pull, gentle tug. Okay, and now I feel like we're good to go. Just going back quickly through it one more time. Okay, so go ahead and put that bead stopper or the tape or whatever you're using, or if you're not using it, then that's okay too, about six inches from the end. Now you're gonna go ahead and put your needle on the other end. So you've got that nice big eye and you're just going to put your cord right through the eye. So now what you have is a needle to string on all your beads. And so I have a couple different examples here. Like on this one, I did a pattern here and I'll do this bracelet here for a sample right now. So what I did was I did three of the seed beads, I did three of the rondelles, three of the rounds, three rondelles, and then I repeated. So you just literally pick up the beads with your needle. So one, two, three, and then slide them down. So you have to give it sometimes a little tug to go over the eye of the needle, and then the eye of the needle will start to compress. And that's totally fine. That's no problem at all. Okay, so I did three of those, and now I'm gonna do three of these. So one, two, three. Okay, let those go down, and then I'm gonna do three of these really pretty, nice big round beads. One, two, three. Okay, and then let those go down. That bead stopper is stopping them from falling off. So three more, oops, <laughs> they jump around. Three more of the rondelles. Okay, and that was a full sequence of the pattern I'm doing on here. So you can see what that looks like now. We'll even go ahead and we'll put three more of the seed beads on here so, so you can see it. But you don't have to follow any pattern. You can have fun just stringing these however you want to. Um, in whatever order or complete random assortment that you want. Okay, so that's what we've got on there so far. So I'm gonna go off camera now and I'm going to finish stringing this bracelet and then I'm gonna show you how to tie it off. Okay, so this is what I have so far. So you see I've repeated that pattern. Now again, I'm gonna make this for a seven and a half inch wrist and I find I can do four complete clusters of that pattern but you can absolutely make up your own pattern on these um, for sure. So now what I wanna do is I wanna measure it and see how long it is. So I have my measuring tape here. So I'm just gonna put it at the very end and I'm gonna measure. So right now it's at about seven inches. I know I don't have enough space to do another full pattern. Oh, my needle came off, so this is good to show you. So if your needle comes off, just slip it right back on. So even if that um, needle eye gets a little compressed, it's still definitely something that you can put back on. 
So now I'm just gonna fill in another half inches of, of beads here. Any pattern I want. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I just wanna get another about half an inch going. Okay, so let's see. Actually, maybe I'll put another one of the pretty round beads on here for a little extra color. It gives me a little more space too. Okay, so let's see where we're at now. So we're gonna take back our measuring tape. We're gonna line it up. Yep, we're much closer. We're right at about seven and a half inches. So you will do it to your own wrist size, but once you've done that, what you can do is you're going to take off whatever you're using as a bead stopper. You're gonna take off your needle and set it aside. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna have about equal lengths of the uh, cord at either end, and it's slippery. You can move these around. When you start to work with the smaller seed beads, you might have to just tug on them a little bit, but they do move around freely. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you're gonna tie it. So to tie this, what you're going to do is you're going to bring it together, let gravity work for you, let those hang down, do a little knot, like so. And now we're gonna go through, we're gonna do another knot and we're gonna go through it twice. We're gonna pass through this twice. Okay, now we're gonna pull it down. Now what I like to do, I like to grab it from all sides and give it a tug. Now you see that this is exposed right here and that's because my beads are crunching up down below. So I'm okay with that. You're gonna see that when I'm done with this knot, the beads are gonna fall back in place nicely. So I actually like to kind of tug it from all sides. I'm almost making like a little X right there. Giving that a really good tug, making sure that knot is secure. Now when I lay it back down, the beads fall in place nicely and they're not crunched. So you don't want too much tension or too little. So you don't want big gaps of cord, but you also don't want it to be so tight that your beads bunch up on themselves. So that is a nice tight knot in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the next step, which is threading our cord ends back through a bead on either side. So an adjacent bead on either side. To do that, go ahead and grab this needle again. This is why you cut extra length to begin with. Okay, so we've got that on there. And we're just gonna go through, I'm just gonna go through one or two beads. So we just went right through those beads. And on this one, I'm only going through one. So what we have now, if we look closely, we have that knot in the middle and then we've got the cords coming out. And again, there's a little gap there and I'm okay with that. When I pull this, it's just gonna tighten up and when these sit, they're gonna sit nicely and, and have room to move and not be too crunched. So that is what we're gonna do for that. Now, we're time, now it is time to add our glue. So when you add your glue, you're going to bring back your E6000 and you're going to have your little um, little tray that you're gonna be using and your little scrap piece of wire ready available. This is a new tube of E6000. So what you're gonna do is you're going to puncture it. There's a little, if we can catch the light here, you can see there's a little point in the middle of that cap. So you just push it down and that punctures it. So now it's open and it kind of gushes out a little bit to begin with. So we're just gonna put a little bit on our table. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna expose that knot again, and we're going to put a little bit of glue on it. So we're just using our applicator, putting a little bit of glue, push down into that knot. And now what you're gonna do is you're just going to pull these ends again a little bit. And what you wanna do is you almost want it to pull more from one side than the other so that that knot kind of slips into one of the beads even if you end up gluing two beads together next to each other, it's totally fine. And then you're just going to let that dry. So I'm just gonna set it down and I didn't put so much glue 
that is going to spill over onto my bead mat. If you do feel like you're worried about that or you're using um, a lot of glue just to be extra cautious, I would just put these on a piece of plastic. I take like a Ziploc bag or something and put these on a piece of plastic to dry. That way they'll come off easily. But you're just going to let that dry and then you're gonna snip your ends. And I will show you how to snip the ends once this dries. But what I'm gonna do is off camera, I'm gonna make up the other bracelets that are part of this kit so that I can then show you not only how to snip the ends, but I can show you what this peach color would look like all together. So if you are, um, looking to make a bigger bracelet, do you remember that you wanna, whoops, that's, is that my cord? No, this is my cord. Um, that was a different spool I had on my table. Um, just remember to cut a little bit longer length, so maybe 22 inches or even 23 inches to start with, um, just so that you have enough fiber to thread back your needle on. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna make the rest of the bracelets and then I will be back to show you what it looks like all done. So a lot has changed on my beading table. I was gonna tie these all off before um, coming back onto this video, but I actually wanted to show you what they look like before I've tied them off. So I kind of do them assembly line. You can definitely do one bracelet at a time and finish it off and do the glue, but I personally think it's a little easier if you just make them all. Also, you can measure out one and then just keep lining up your bracelets against each other to get the right length. But I wanna show you their patterns real quick before I go on and tie them off. here. So here was the one we did before that we strung together. So you can see that one. So that's kind of the heaviest one. That one's got a lot of, um, just of those bigger beads, those super sparkly ones. Then what I did for this colorway, and of course you can string these any which way you like. I wanna show you the variety and the options. So here we go. I did this one where I did a bunch of the little mix of seed beads. Um, they're all different sizes. And then every so often I put a big bead in there. So that was one, put that back there. And then I did two identical because I just thought that they were pretty. So I did that pretty kind of creamy white bead and then a rondelle. And I did six of the creamy whites and then I did the rondelle. So I did two like that. And then I did another one just of the little seed beads. So I did the tiniest of the seed beads in that mix. And then I did one of the uh, larger kind of those creamy white beads and then the nice fire polish round. So I did that one. So that's kind of a fun play on sizes. You go from really small to large. Then with this particular mix, it came with these cool cube beads. So I had these matte cube beads. So I just did an assortment of beads and then a cube bead every so often. And then I did a couple that were just whatever was left. So just kind of a mix of beads. And these were just kind of like little fun seed bead bracelets. So I'm gonna now tie all of these off, off camera, and then I can come back and show you what they all look like. And I'll, I'll snip the tail ends of this one um, on camera on the next one too, just so you can see what that looks like. But really quick, I wanna show you how many beads are left. So I was able to make eight bracelets that were 7.5 inches long. So this is the amount of beads I had left. And then this is the amount of stretch cord I had left. So again, if you are making a smaller size bracelet and you cut shorter lengths of the stretch cord, um, you, and you're also gonna be then using less beads per bracelet, you'll probably be able to get a ninth bracelet out of there. If you have a little bit of a larger wrist and you are cutting larger lengths of the stretch fiber, you're cutting more like 22 inches um, and you're using more beads per bracelet, you are gonna probably be able to get seven bracelets comfortably out of this kit. So just kind of keep that in mind when you are planning what you're gonna be doing um, in terms of how you cut your stretch cord and how you use your beads, but really fun designs. And again, it could be anything you wanna be. There's no right or wrong way to string these. So I'm gonna tie these guys all up, add their little glue to their knots and let them dry and then come back on camera. I'll show you how to trim the tail and you'll see the complete set. A lot has changed on my table since we last looked. So I've gone ahead and put all of these bracelets together. So you can see that I've tied them off and they um, have cut their tails, all their knots have been glued. So they are good and ready to go. So I did wanna wait to trim the tails of the one that we did here in the video, just to show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. Um, actually, it's very simple. You, what I like to do is I like to just hold up the end of it 
And then I just put my scissor here against it and trim. So easy to do. Here we go, here's the other side. And just trim it right next to that bead. Just make sure that you're far enough away from the core stretch cord that's going through it so you don't accidentally cut through the wrong one. But very easy to do. And there we have our finished bracelet. So you can see what this color way looks all together. So a lot of nice variation. That seed bead mix really helps to add a lot of interest because you got so many different beads coming into play. So this is kind of the pretty peachy cream. Oh, that'd be a good name for it, peaches and cream um, color mix. And then I'll just show you again real quick. We've got the purple and silver. Then we have the turquoise and gold. And then we've got the silver with just a hint of blue, kind of an icy color palette right there. And then the rosy pink and silver. So lots of fun choices of color for everybody. And these are just some great kits. They are Beta Halik stretch bracelet kits. Thanks everyone for watching this video. I know it was a longer one. I hope it shared some good information, some good tips, and I hope you really like these kits. Thanks.